at this point, I had been off on medical leave for almost a whole year and my health was desperate. My physical condition was getting desperate. And so my husband was the one that actually said, hey, why don't you try the carnivore diet again? And so I knew I had to do something. And so that's when I decided to try it again. So I've been on it now for a little over six months. Today, we're with Lynn, and I appreciate you being with us today, Lynn, to learn a little bit about you and your story when it comes to the carnivore diet and your why, and just to get a little bit more information about your particular situation, your challenges that you face, and yeah, hopefully you'll be able to inspire others with your knowledge and experience. So I thank you for being here, Lynn. Well, thank you so much for having me, Adam. Awesome. So can you start off by letting our subscribers know a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so my name is Lynn, obviously. Um, I am a retired nurse, recently had to retire in February of this year, 2023, due to a serious illness. Um, but I have a long history of, of health issues. I am married. I have been married for 33 years. And... Awesome. Uh, Yes, I have a husband and I have three kids, all of them adopted, three grandkids, and um, spent most of my life in um, California. So pretty much born and raised in California. Um, Ten years ago, when I was 45, moved up to Washington State. And so we are now living in the beautiful Puget Sound area. Oh, that's awesome. I bet it's really beautiful up there. It's, it's probably starting to get kind of cold now. It's getting a little bit chilly, yeah, but I I actually enjoy it because I don't do well in the heat. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Yeah, it's for, it worked out perfectly to move up here. Right. Well, that's awesome. I'm sorry to hear that you've had some health issues and challenges. So is that the reason why you started the carnivore diet? Yes, absolutely. And um, I started it in the at the end of May of this year, but this was the second time. I was on it. I was on it in October of 2021 for about six weeks. And then I quit. Uh oh. I know. And it was really, it was working. It was helping me. Um, but my health wasn't in nearly as bad a condition then as it, as it is, you know, as it was when I started this time. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, I had been off on medical leave for almost a whole year and my health was desperate. My physical condition was getting desperate. And so mm -hmm. my husband was the one that actually said, hey, why don't you try the carnivore diet again? And mm -hmm. so I knew I had to do something. And so that's when I decided to try it again. So I've been on it now for a little over six months. Okay. Yeah. So can you dive into a little bit about what your actual challenges are? Absolutely. So my challenges actually started decades before I actually got a diagnosis. I started having kind of strange symptoms when I was in my 20s, along with other issues that were identifiable, such as polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, major fertility problems. And then through the course of doing fertility treatments, I started experiencing really severe anxiety and panic attacks. And, but I was, I think that that health issue was so overwhelming to me that I was ignoring these other symptoms. And at the time, the other symptoms were pretty much just pretty severe heat intolerance. Mm -hmm. And living in the, we, at the time, living in the Sacramento area of California, it, it would get pretty hot in the summertime. Um, but I noticed that I would have symptoms, very severe symptoms in the heat much, much quicker than other people would. I would go from being fine to maybe 20, 30 minutes into being out in that heat. And I would be, feel like I was pretty much on the verge of having a heat stroke. Oh, wow. And it was, I was done. I was dizzy and nauseated and I was just, you know, I had to lay down and, it, and I just felt horrible. Mm -hmm. And so, but I kind of brushed this, those symptoms aside and, um, because we were dealing with looking to adopt children and, um, the fertility treatments never worked. I did, we did four, four times, never worked. And 
I was dealing a lot with the, the increasing anxiety. And after we adopted our first two, uh, about a year later, I ended up having a complete nervous breakdown oh, and goodness. ended up, I was working as an accountant at the time. I, the nursing is my second career. I was working as an accountant at the time. And I just um, was really struggling with the panic attacks. And one day I just had this overwhelming dread and fear that I was going to die because of symptoms I was having, anxiety symptoms. And I just told my coworkers, I got to go. And I left work and I drove myself to a psychiatric hospital. And they admitted me because I was oh. convinced mm -hmm. I was going to die. And so I was there for five days and my body just completely collapsed. I mean, just I when I got discharged, I ended up being in a partial hospitalization program for quite a few weeks. But when I wasn't in the program and at home, I couldn't do anything like I could not bathe myself. Really, I couldn't prepare any food. I could not. I had no energy at all. And um, so that took me quite a while to recover from. Mm -hmm. And. I did and eventually end up recovering, but I, I gained weight. I didn't start gaining weight actually until I got diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome in my early twenties. I was a normal weight prior to that. Um, but over the course of decades of dealing with health problems, a lot of them things I didn't, I just didn't know what was wrong with me. I gained a lot of weight. Um, I have been to like 17 different specialists oh, over the course of the years. Yeah. It's so it's a lot. Yeah. So it really kind of started to escalate when I was, let's see, maybe 2014, I was nursing. I was working in hospital at the time and I had a sudden attack of this dizziness and tachycardia. Um, my blood pressure was really elevated. I mean, my, all my nursing colleagues came rushing to the rescue and took all my vitals and you know, and they immediately sent me down to the ER in the hospital I was working at. And they did the full workup on me and, did, you know, did a CT scan of my head and did the whole cardiac workup. Didn't find anything. And the doctor sent me home with some meclizine for a possible inner ear. Didn't diagnose me officially, but said, well, maybe it's your inner ear. <laughs> what? <laughs> Here's some medication, see wow. if it works. Try this. <laughs> How often does that happen, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the medication didn't work. And so I went through a whole series of tests with different. I went to see um, an audiologist and really got a good workup in my ear. And I did find out there was an issue with my ear. I have a vestibular conduction disorder. Um, it turns out that wasn't what was causing the problems. Uh I went to see a, a neurologist, had a brain MRI. There wasn't anything alert. There was nothing, nothing concerning about that. Hmm. Um, and so I just kind of brushed it off and said, all right, well, I guess that was, I don't know what caused it. But um, then a couple, like 2016, I had another attack. This time I was at home and I was just sitting comfortably in my family room watching some TV. And all of a sudden I started, my throat started to swell and I developed severe tachycardia. Oh, wow. And just out, it seemed like it was out of nowhere. And so I called 911, unlocked the front door, popped some Benadryl, told my daughter, I just called an ambulance. And then I sat down and waited. And when they arrived, they took my blood pressure and it was like 220 over 120. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was really bad. They took me in to the ER and um, the doctor ran some tests. And the first thought was because of the throat swelling. Well, it's an allergic reaction to something. And so the tests were all run and the doctor said none of the al al allergy, the tests for allergies showed anything. But they ran a test called a serum tryptase and that was elevated. I didn't have any idea what that was. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want you to go see an allergist. And so I just, I went ahead and went to see an allergist and they ran a whole series of tests and said, look, I'm the doctor. The doctor said, I'm thinking you may have a mast cell disease. And mm -hmm. so he said, this is what I want you to do. I want you, he ordered a need another serum tryptase test and ordered a 24 hour urine collection 
that was testing for some specific chemical mediators that the mast cells actually release. Mm -hmm. And he said, when, if you have another attack, get these tests done. Well, I ended up having two more attacks while we were on vacation. Oh no. And couldn't get the test done. And then I ended up also, if I found out that if I, and if heat, I found out that heat was a trigger and it kind of reminded me about back in my twenties when I was having the heat issues, I ended up, we were in Manhattan and then we were going to go on a cruise of the New England States and, you know, Eastern Canada. But when we were in Manhattan, it was actually kind of warm and the subway was really stuffy. And I ended up having an attack just at ground zero in New York, in Manhattan. We were looking at the tower and the whole monument of ground zero. I was with my cousin who lives there. And all of a sudden, I just felt it come on and I felt the dizziness. And we couldn't get me. And I, my throat was swollen a little bit. It wasn't horrible. My husband, I told my husband, I have, we have to go back to the hotel. So I had to ride all the way back to the subway. And just like resting on his shoulder and got back to the hotel. But by then it was so, it had been so long. I ended up developing severe abdominal cramping as well. Oh, man. And it took several hours, but it did finally pass in the coolness of the hotel room. So that happened twice during that vacation. So I it just timing it, timing the tests was really hard. Um, I finally got a diagnosis, a real diagnosis last year. And um, because what ended up happening was during the pandemic and working as a nurse, they like I was working outpatient nursing by this time. They sent us all home, like in March of 2020, any of us who could work from home and I could. I was already working from home one day a week. And um, they so they sent us all home. And then around June, they said, OK, we're going to bring scheduled nurse visits again. And so one of you at a time, come back into the office and and do the nurse visit. So my turn came and I had a reaction, same thing, throat swelling, dizziness, adult nausea from the heat from my breath from wearing a mask. Oh. Yeah. And so I quickly told my boss, she said, go home. And I ended up being at home the whole rest of the time. But then they, my, my work said, look, we need nurses who can actually be here. So Either you come in and wear the masks or we're going to have to maybe find something for you that's officially a remote job. So I asked him, can I please go to the doctor? I was starting to get a workup years ago about this. Can I please go to the doctor mm -hmm. and see if the doctor can solve this problem? And so they said, sure. So I, I did. Um, and then I ended up needing to get a bone marrow biopsy. They retested my tryptase when I was not having a reaction. So he kind of circumvented his own rules and said, let's just do another trip taste, serum trip taste. Mm -hmm. And they did the 24 hour year and I wasn't having a reaction. Well, the trip taste was even higher. And so it was 20 something and the 20 is the cutoff where they're not sure which mast cell disease you might have. So he said, let's get a bone marrow biopsy and see whether you have systemic mastocytosis or mast cell activation syndrome. And so I had the bone marrow biopsy and, the, and it did not show systemic mastocytosis, thank God. Um, but so he said, you have mast cell activation syndrome. And then um, we did a, a genetic test with the cheek swab and, and for hereditary alpha tryptosemia, which is another rare disease. And that came back positive. And that's why I, my, my mast cells produce extra tryptase copies whenever they degranulate, release all these chemicals, they produce extra tryptase. My tryptase is always high. Um, but so it was, that was kind of hard. And so it was basically with this, with this condition, I have to avoid triggers. And so I had to tell my employer, I, I can't come back in and wear a mask because right. the heat from my breath is a trigger and I have to avoid the triggers. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then before they could say, okay, well, we're going to have to let you go. I ended up with this really bad, um, abscess on my chest that I'd had this little cyst. And then we went to, uh, to one of our timeshares and I was sitting in a hot tub and I think, I don't think it was chlorinated well enough. And I developed into this abscess that I, I needed like 
I had I went through I had a course of antibiotics that didn't help at all. And then it got worse and worse and it was getting mushy and it actually tunneled all the way to my sternum. Wow. I had to get it drained and packed. And so they cultured what they took out of it and found this weird bacteria that mm. was, they, the doctor said, sometimes it just show up in poorly chlorinated hot tubs and asked, had you been in a hot tub? And I, all of a sudden the light bulb went on. Yes. Really? And I, I, so I had to go every other day and get that wound, wound care and get it repacked. And the infection just completely caused a huge flare of the mast cell disease. And so here I am, I'm work, still working, working from home and I'm working triaging patients and helping patients over the phone. And I was incredibly exhausted. I couldn't think very often. I couldn't get my words out. I would slur my speech or the words just wouldn't come out. I would be dizzy constantly, um, abdominal pain, nausea, and that the body aches were horrible. And I just knew I was not safe as a nurse because mm -hmm. I can't have that, you know, and I was, I, my days were getting shorter and shorter because I was feeling so bad. I just had to quit. I just would tell my colleagues, I can't keep going to the point where I would maybe come in for an hour and I would say, I, I can't do it. And so I had to go on medical leave. And wow, yeah. And so it was, I, they could only hold my job. They gave me, maybe my employer was great. They gave me all the chance to recover, but it was like nine months and I still wasn't, my doctor still couldn't release me back. And, um, so I, I ended up retiring in February, but over the course of that year with that horrible, horrible flare of the mast cell disease, um, my I was, couldn't do anything other than lay around and I gained more and more weight and I was injuring myself. If I tried to do anything, like I ended up with lower back problems. I ended up injuring my knee all the time. My hips were in horrible pain. Um, and this, my body pain was incredible. Like I would, I, I would even wake up in the middle of the night with my hair follicles in, in so much pain. Wow. Mast cell disease can affect every poor part of your body. And my rosacea was horrible. It looked like a leper. I have videos on my channel about showing how bad my, some shorts and stuff showing how bad my rosacea was. But um, so for those, for those uh, that are watching that don't know what mast cell activation syndrome is, can you give it in, in layman's terms exactly what it is? Absolutely. I've had to learn myself, even as a nurse, I hadn't even heard of it before. <laughs> Um, so you're really to understand what it is. You have to understand what your mast cell is. We all have mast cells. They're produced in our bone marrow and they're kind of like the first responder of our immune system. And okay. whenever our body is exposed to something foreign that the body sees as a threat, the mast cells will do something called degranulate. And inside the mast cells, there's over 200 chemical mediators. And so they basically dissolve. And they send out these chemical mediators out through your body. And a lot of people can relate to allergies because allergy, when you feel the symptoms of an allergy, you're feeling those symptoms because of the histamine that's response that, that's, that's uh, sent out to your body through your mast cells. And so that's why people will take an antihistamine when they have. So histamine is the biggest, you know, probably the most, uh, Quantity wise, the biggest chemical that's produced by the mast cells. But with my mast cells, so with a normal functioning mast cell, it's kind of like sending a fire truck out to fight a fire, right? They will, they're the first responder. They'll go out and fight the fire. Well, my mast cells are like the fire truck is going out there, there's no fire. They're just going out and do it, trying to fight a fire that's not there. Now, they do respond to all sorts of different stimulus and different triggers, but they also just kind of have a mind of their own as well. And so if you think about how you, how you feel, like when you feel like you're coming down with something, um, that's because those symptoms you're having are part of your immune system, getting gearing up to fight whatever you have. And so you feel terrible, mm -hmm. you know, but that's kind of baseline how I felt all the time, you know, oh, wow. 
horrible fatigue, body aches. You feel flushed, feel like you're constantly coming down with something. That's the way, that was my baseline of how I felt. Um, that had to be horrible. It, yeah. And I didn't really realize, I mean, I had been dealing with it for so long, but it does get progressively worse as you get older. And my diet was terrible. I mean, by the time, I think my highest weight was like 347 pounds and I had lost some weight. Um, you know, I'd done keto for a couple of years, but kind of plateaus and I've gained it all back. And then I did carnivore and lost some weight. So by the time I was come to wanting to try carnivore, I had weighed myself for a long time, but I knew I had gained a lot of weight back. So when I weighed in the very first time, and this was a, maybe a few days after starting carnivore, I was 339. So I was probably over 340 again by the time I started back the carnivore. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew I needed to do something. Um, when it comes to mass activation syndrome, there's only like four places in the U.S. where they have experts in this condition and they're all back east and I'm on the west coast. And so I joined a couple of Facebook groups with a bunch of people who had, you know, both of my conditions. And um, then I started seeing a naturopathic doctor. The allergist that I was seeing threw some medication at me and said, come back and see me if you don't feel better in three months. Huh? And never said a word about avoiding triggers um, identifying triggers. Mm -hmm. I ended up, the, the naturopathic doctor put me on some medication that was compound that the allergist didn't put me on, but then also ran some additional tests, like test, did a mycotox test, tested me for mold toxicity. And it came back positive. And we ended up bringing in a mold specialist to do an inspection on our house. And our house was said the cleanest he's seen hmm. no mold issues in our home so we're kind of wondering if i may be one of the if I, I guess there's a gene or something some people have this gene where you just don't really naturally detox mold properly mm -hmm. so there's a possibility that that's the case so that allergist would have never identified that never even brought it up so i'm seeing a, a naturopathic doctor we're running a bunch you know we're kind of checking off boxes, trying to get me detox from mold. Mm -hmm. um, but the carnivore diet was kind of like, I needed to do something because I was having like throat swelling, even though like my baseline was feeling like you're always coming down with the flu. There were also these more acute kind of episodes with the throat swelling and the dizziness and the nausea. Mm -hmm. And I was having probably two or three of those a week. Wow. And had to go back to the ER and, you know, the same thing, severe tachycardia, hypertension. And I finally list, I found this one doctor who I will listen to. And she said that she had not the mass cell activation syndrome, but the heter hereditary alpha tryptosemia that I also have. And they're related. So mm -hmm. she was saying that when she has these reactions, she takes rapid dissolved Claritin at the first sign of it. And then I found out at the ER, they gave me IV, basically pepsid, famotidine. Um, and I quickly felt better. So I thought, I'm going to get chewable famotidine, rapid dissolved Claritin, and I'm going to see if that'll help me when I start to feel an episode coming on. Mm -hmm. And it did. Oh, nice. So, yeah, so that was good. That helped, but that didn't decrease the episodes. Mm -hmm. And then my naturopathic doctor took, put me on a new medication that made it so that I was only having an episode maybe once or twice a month. But at the point where I started the carnivore diet, I was still having episodes, you know, and sometimes more than twice a month. Um, and my, my diet was just terrible because I felt horrible and I felt like I had so much fatigue that every time I was reaching for food, it was looking for an energy source. I was trying to find something that would make me feel better. I mm -hmm. knew I wasn't hungry. but I was looking for energy. And so it was usually sugar and I'd eat ice cream, I'd eat whatever. And I, cause I'd feel better for a little while. Mm -hmm. 
and it would give me a little bit of energy and drink lots of coffee. And, um, but, but my pain, my whole, my, my body pain, I had bone pain. It was all getting worse. And, um, so I knew I had to do something. And so the carnivore diet was kind of like my, my last attempt to get healthy. Okay. How long ago did you actually start the carnivore diet back up? Uh, May 27th of this year. Of this year? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I decided to start a YouTube channel to hold myself accountable, you know, That's not awesome. knowing what to expect. Right. <laughs> and it was That's scary, awesome. you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I weighed a lot. I was, I mean, I weighed as much as some, but I was very self-conscious, you know? Right. Yeah. That's always a, a tough position. And you have more strength than most because the before picture, most people don't want people to see the before. So you're definitely going to be an inspiration for many uh, by doing that. Yeah. I was mortified when I, you know, the, the, the before fit, the before picture that I shared with you, mm -hmm. um, that was taken at a baby shower in April of this year. And when I, and all these pictures from the baby shower were posted on this, you know, group page that we have with the women in our church. And I saw that picture and I was just mortified. Like, oh my goodness. I say you just the picture of me, but on my, on one of my community posts, I actually put the full picture which was me and then two other normal sized women sitting on this couch. And I put little smiley face, smiley emojis <laughs> over their heads so you can't see them, but you can see the difference in our body sizes. Right. I mean, I was like mammoth and they were just these normal sized people. And I, I, saw, I saw, I saw the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, it happens to people, right? Yep. You don't really realize. And to some extent, I think I had a little bit of body dysmorphia. On the right. side of, I didn't know how fat I was. Right. I just didn't see it until I saw that picture. So. Wow. So since then, you have a couple of conditions that you're working through. Since you started the carnivore diet in May, have you seen any improvements in those conditions? Absolutely. It was not like an automatic thing. And I know a lot of people will, will feel wonderful shortly after. I did have instant reduction in inflammation. I think within a few days, the body pain was starting to go away to a dramatic extent. It wasn't a hundred percent, but it was to a dramatic extent. Um, and I was losing weight. So I started, I mean, I use a body composition skill. And so I always look and see like, what does the scale weight say? But what, how much bone I've gained bone, I've gained muscle. Um, and, I, and so I can calculate my actual fat loss. And so mm -hmm. I was reporting that these, those metrics every Monday, I report those metrics and I was seeing the weight come off, but I was so surprised because I was not able to exercise. It was just not safe for me to try to exercise at that point. Um, with, because I was always injuring myself when I tried. So it was no exercise, but I was gaining muscle and I was gaining bone without, wow. without exercising at all. <laughs> and so I was just going, what? Like, unbelievable. Like I'm obviously giving myself the building blocks for what I need because I, my muscle, I know I lost muscle like crazy when I was on medical leave and just laying around. So it was so encouraging to me to see the muscle gain and the bone gain and very motivating. So I thought, okay, obviously this is doing something in my body. And I realized like I have an immune system disease, so I don't know how my body is going to respond ultimately, but it's obviously good things are happening. Mm -hmm. So it gave me motivation to continue. And my rosacea, I was seeing a little bit of improvement. Um, and my gut wasn't necessarily improving that much. And um, so I decided to go on the lion diet and okay. just really restrict things way down. Because I had already been, like when I started out, I was doing like everybody else does. And I was eating the bacon and eggs and I was eating the cheese and, and I was putting creamer and coffee and, um, you know, I was doing and eating pork. And then I realized I need to cut back on the higher histamine foods. 
And so I had to cut out the bacon, which is sad because I love bacon. I, and then egg whites are high in histamine. The egg yolks were fine. So I was just doing egg yolks and I cut out the dairy. And then I ended up um, eventually cutting out all eggs and just going on the lion diet because I was seeing some improvement, mm -hmm. but I felt like I really not quite there yet. And so I did the lion diet for six weeks okay. and I feel like this, so I was doing beef, lamb, and salt and obviously water. And I drink element for electrolytes, mm -hmm. um, but that's when I really started seeing improvement in my rosacea and in my gut. My gut was, cause I was always having some sort of pain in, in my gut. That, so that the gut pain went away. My rosacea is so much better. It's not a hundred percent, but it is so much better. Like I don't have any makeup on and I looked like a leper before. So, oh, wow. oh yeah. Red blotches all over my face. Well, that's a and huge so, right there. Oh yeah. That's a huge, yeah, absolutely. And I was so self-conscious about it because I mean, people would look at me like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? Right. And so I did the lion diet for six weeks and I decided I'm going to see if I can, you know, treat it like an elimination diet. And I did end up adding back fish and I did, I've done fine with fish. And um, then I tried to add back ghee. This was just last week and not sure how it really went. I think maybe my gut was having some issues with it. So I'm right now, I'm just, kind of hanging out with the beef, the lamb, and now the fish. And I did add a couple more seasonings. I can't do black pepper, but I can do white pepper. Black pepper is high in histamine. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I have lost, as of this Monday when I weighed in, so the scale was down 55 pounds. The, I've gained over 19 pounds of muscle. I've gained 1.4 pounds of bone. So my actual fat loss is wow. a little over 75 pounds. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. only been what, six, seven it's months? Been six months. Okay. Um, I now, and what, one other thing that the lion diet did is it cut my throat swelling and tachycardia dizzy reactions down to almost zero. I think the whole six weeks that I was on the lion diet, I only had one time. And I, that was, I really believe that that was some tree that was, I do have some allergies. I think that was like a tree. We were out driving around and sometimes there's some stuff going on with the leaves falling and everything I right. will react to. Can't control everything. Right. And well, like Dr. Chapey says, plants are trying to kill you. Oh, they're <laughs> literally trying to kill me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And so, um, but I started about a little after three months in, I started trying to walk. In fact, one of my viewers called me out and said, you're, I could tell you're not even exercising. And I said, you're right. I'm not. And I'm kind of scared too. And he just really encouraged me to just take it slow, start moving. Mm -hmm. And I started to exercise, tried to go around my block, which is maybe a quarter of a mile. And it was limping and staggering. I couldn't even walk a straight line. Um, and I tweak my knee, but I kept doing. It. Mm -hmm. And now I've been able to go. I've been going on these mall walks with all the old ladies, even though I'm not old, but, you know. <laughs> and I went on um, yesterday. We went and I walked about two miles. Oh, wow. That's a yeah. huge difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And didn't have, I didn't have any problems. And usually, and before, like too, like I couldn't even, I could hardly shower. And so I would maybe shower once a week, which was disgusting, I realized. But I'd take baths because I just didn't have the strength like to lift my arms over mm -hmm. my head. And I was just, and I can't take hot showers because the heat is such a trigger. I have to take kind of more, a little warmer than lukewarm. But I just didn't have the strength to shower. And so mm -hmm. I got to the point, like maybe three months in or so where I could shower a little more often, but I'd have to go lay in bed for a couple hours afterwards to recover. Wow. And now I can shower and just go on with my day. And That's amazing. I haven't been able to do that for a really long time. That's so amazing. These all these little like non-scale victories 
mm-hmm. that are so meaningful to me because they really impact mm-hmm. my life um, and my ability to feel like I can function like a normal human being. It's just, I can't imagine what my life is going to be like in another year, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, it's, what do they say? Um, cells, you know, every cell in your body uh, renews itself every, what, seven years or something like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, at least in, in my case, I'm like, hey, if if I feel like this the way I do now and it just continues to get better and possibility of being like totally, completely normal within seven years, I mean, it, it, I just can't even believe it. <laughs> I know, I, felt I like know. I was on death's door almost, you know, not, not, not literally, but, you know, you get older, you know, I was 46 at the time. And, uh, I, I just assumed, you know, Hey, this is what, what it feels like when you start to get this age and it just, it's all right. downhill from here and I might as well just hang up my hat, you know? Yeah. But. Yeah, it's, I yeah. don't feel that way well, anymore. <laughs> I mean, same with me. Like, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I mean, and doctors didn't know. I mean, a lot, let's see, I can't tell you how many times I was told that it was just stress. And yeah, I figured, well, maybe it's depression or whatever, but I'm not a depressed person. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't feel depressed. I mean, I'm a happy person. Right. Yeah. So I, I just kind of felt like, there's just something missing that we're not, we don't know, you know, something. And it's back when I started having symptoms, nobody knew that there was such a thing as mast cell activation syndrome or hereditary alpha tryptosemia. Mast cell disease was discovered, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago. And I think it's been for like five or six years with the hereditary alpha tryptosemia. Um, wow. So as I'm listening to the experts in the mast cell disease, um, they're saying that they think it's a lot more common than was originally thought. Mm-hmm. It's still listed on the National Institute of Health website as rare, and then under their rare diseases, both of them are. Um, but they said up to possibly maybe one in six people have it and don't realize it. Wow, That's and huge. It comes in, you know. It comes in various severities. There's a, it's a spectrum, right? Mm-hmm. But it does get progressively worse as you get older. So some of so after I learned more about it, and it was still nursing at the time, I started recognizing patients that were kind of similar to me, mm-hmm. who had been to a ton of specialists without getting any answers and were really frustrated and having weird symptoms and. I just started telling them about mast cell activation syndrome and said, hey, you know, you may not have it, but at least it's something else to add to the list to investigate. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that I'm trying to do with my channel, a lot of it is my weight loss and everything, but to share about it. Because if one, up to one in six people has it, there's going to be people out there that that have and don't realize it or they just their symptoms are mild right now but as they get older they might might start to have other weird symptoms that they don't understand and i just want it to be something that's that comes to mind for people that, right. oh this is a real thing and i i listen to somebody who has it i'm starting to have strange symptoms that sound like it could be <laughs> could right. be this yeah cuz and and it it basically, if it's, it, it can affect, you know, your neurological system, it can affect, you know, any organ system in your whole body and your skin is an organ. So also your skin. Mm-hmm. And so, but in order to even be suspected of having it, you have to have at least two organ systems that are affected. And I, everybody that I've talked to who has it, that's like n- not even an issue They most of us have multiple s- systems that are affected by it. Ah, uh, Interesting. So in the space surrounding this disorder, is it ever talked about diet as a possible solution or is it? You know, it is among the, those of us who have it again, because there are so few experts, um, any, the regular doctors I've seen, no, would not No, They don't really say anything about diet. Mm-hmm. I told the allergist, I actually asked the allergist, should I be? like avoiding high histamine foods. And he says, well, you can if you want. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks. I knew that. (laughs) 
Thank you. I didn't need you. I wasn't asking for your permission. <laughs> right. Asking for your expert medical advice. But, <laughs> but, you know, among those of us who have it, we know that histamine is a big issue mm -hmm. and um, that we need to be, you know, avoiding high histamine foods. And there's a really, really good thorough list that was put out by the Swiss interest group. Mm -hmm. uh, on histamine intolerance, and I use that as my guideline okay. for for what to what to, what I can eat. And I, of course, now I'm just sticking with the carnivore foods. Mm -hmm. um, but even there's a lot of carnivore fo foods that are high histamine. Right. And shelf life is important too. I mean, in leftovers, like you can't just you have put leftovers in the fridge. Like I can eat them maybe a day later, but if the longer they the longer leftovers are is staying in the in the fridge, the more histamine they develop just naturally on their own. Mm -hmm. But aged cheeses, aged meat, smoke anything smoked, I automatically can't have. I can't have anything fermented. Um, those are an automatic no. And you know, pork. If it's really really fresh, I could have. I could have pork. Fish is supposed to be really fresh, but can't have bacon. You know. And again, egg whites are high histamine. And so there's, there's a lot that I can't have. That's one thing that I was going to ask you in terms of beef on the carnivore diet and the histamine level. So I'm familiar with Michaela Peterson's issues and she yeah. has to have beef that is not aged at all. It's literally slaughtered and like flash frozen imme almost immediately. So is that yeah. something like what you have to do? I am not as bad as her. But I do have, I mean, we got our beef from a local rancher and I can't have it hung longer than maybe a couple of weeks. So, okay. and that's all they hung it. And so mm -hmm. I was, I've been fine with it, but I do, I have to be careful, but not as careful as her. Okay. Yeah. But I cannot eat chicken. Chicken will make my throat swell. Yeah. I can't either just because it tastes like cardboard, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I did eat chicken, I was only eating the dark meat anyways, because I liked, I didn't like the white meat, but, um, yeah, and it's weird with chicken. Some chicken will make my throat swell and others won't. And I just don't want my throat to swell. So I don't eat it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So do you, uh, do you eat any smoked meats like brisket no. or can't uh, have anything smoked cause it's high histamine. Okay. That's what I was, that's what I figured. Which so, is unfortunate because it's all there. It's all delicious, <laughs> right? Yeah, we bought a smoker recently, and I had been on the carnivore diet for quite a while, and it was strict to B B B and E, and and almost eliminated butter altogether. So that really wasn't into that equation. But I smoked a pork butt for the first time, and man, I really had an issue with that eating that because it. Mm. I think I had to smoke it like ten hours or something like that, and. Okay. Uh, and I really, I don't know if it was just the, what the, what it was comprised of, like what the hog ate or if they aged it longer, or if it was just the smoking that did it, or and my body just doesn't like pork, but man. I mean, it, it, it could have been a histamine response. You have a lot of histamine receptors in your gut. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people will end up with gut, a gut response, um, just very upset, unhappy, unhappy gut. I'm hoping that that was not it. <laughs> we, we spent a lot of money on that smoker, way more than we probably should have. It was like $750. And uh, I'm like, man, I'm going to be able to smoke all these, you know, my steaks and all this stuff and brisket and everything. And it, it seems like every time I use it, I have some sort of an issue with, well, uh, with those meats. So, yeah, I mean, it might not be able to do it. It's unfortunate, but you know, if it's, I mean, think about it, it's an immune response in your body. And that definitely takes a toll when you're constantly mounting an immune response to something. And so, I mean, that's why I just would rather avoid the things that cause, cause me to have my symptoms. It's just way easier to feel good. Right. <laughs> you know? for, for sure. You know, and the food is the food is still good. I mean, the food, I, I use my sous vide all the time and mm -hmm. then, and then I just air fry and I use beef tallow. Um, and the food's delicious. And so what's I, a typical I, meal look like for you? 
Um, so we have the beef that we got, you know, from the from the farm, and we also got a half a lamb. Um, so I mean, I just I'll pull it. I'll pull out some like some steaks, and I'll always have ground beef. The ground beef from our cow that we bought is actually so much better than what we get at, would get at the grocery store. So right. I always have at least two or three pounds of ground beef. A lot of times I'll mix, mix it with some ground lamb and then I'll just season it and make sure it's all mixed really well. And then I'll just put it in a, like a Ziploc bag in my fridge. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, when I feel like eating like lunch or something, I'll pull out some and I'll just smash it onto an uh, insert for my air fryer, you know, stick it in the <laughs> air fryer and, and, and air fry it. Nice. And then it, a lot of times at dinner time we'll have you know of course we love rib ribeye oh and, yeah you know rib, rib, ribeye is a favorite but we have <laughs> you know we have chuck roast we have all different kinds of steaks we have lamb chops and um i just what, what one of the cuts we got was an arm roast which i hadn't had before it's delicious it's really Never good. Heard of that one. yeah i hadn't either and so i'll do those like the roast i'll do like in my crock pot Okay. Right. Everything else, I'll just I'll sous vide. I've got a bunch of meat in the sous vide right now, and then we'll just take it out and air fry it. You know, and it's that's, amazing. So that's good. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So you started the carnivore diet roughly six months ago, and your symptoms have improved. So, do you attribute your success with the carnivore diet alone, or is it just the fact that you had eliminated foods, or how do you feel about that? I feel like it's both. I feel like it's the fact that I did eliminate foods um, because of the fact that I have the issues with the histamine. I, I needed to eliminate those foods. But the actual, so from, from the perspective of being less reactive, I think el eliminating all those other foods is probably really the big key for me. But when it comes to the weight loss, the decrease in inflammation, overall inflammation, um, the muscle gain, the bone gain, my increased stamina, hundred percent the carnivore diet. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear because uh, I I feel the same way. I was doing a vegan diet for almost two years prior to switching cold turkey straight into the carnivore diet, um, and I can attest that. In terms of how I felt, it's night and day. It's literally night and day. And I was doing yeah. the more raw vegan diet. Oh, wow. Yeah. So doing lots of juicing and things like that. Eating cool. mountains and like mountains and mountains of spinach and green smoothies. And yeah. So after I switched, I definitely can attest that the carnivore diet is far superior, at least for me, in terms of healing and energy and just... Right how you feel overall. I, I, of course, I had some oxalate dumping that came along with that. Sure. Eating so much spinach. Yeah. And that was wild. But it was wild to know that that stuff was inside me. <laughs> right. Well, once so you learn, think, yeah, once you learn, it's like, whoa, like, why didn't I know that? And why didn't anybody tell me that? And But I know with me, I just feel grateful mm -hmm. that I, I, I know now. Right. Absolutely. You know? And And for me, the... It took me quite a few months before I started feeling like I was starting to get some energy. It it wasn't as fast as with a lot of other people. And I just, I think it's because I had been out on medical leave for so long and I do have an immune system disease, mm -hmm. which is very inflammatory. Um, but probably about the five month mark, and this is probably like maybe a couple weeks or so after doing the lion diet, Mm -hmm. started having these days where I had energy and that was something that honestly I had not experienced since I was maybe a teenager my whole adult <laughs> life wow. like my whole adult life I did not have good days at all and I remember too I mentioned I mentioned this on my channel there was a couple of other people that commented that yeah I've experienced that too I would just be sitting quietly and all of a sudden I would feel this sense of well-being come over me mm -hmm. and like it was profound this feeling it's like is this what it feels like to feel good <laughs> right like oh I can't believe in that 
that is happening more frequently. That's awesome. I love sure. to hear that. And I'm, I'm just wondering if at some point as I heal, if that's going to be my new normal, because if it is, mm -hmm. watch out. Cause there's not, gonna, I'm going to be on top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, I feel like, I feel like I have spent my whole adult life feeling horrible. And I told my, you know, my husband goes, oh, so you're feeling better. You want to go back to work? I'm like, well, first of all, I'm not that much better, but right. I said, honestly, even if I am to the point where I'm well enough to go back and work, I don't want to. Right. Because I have worked my whole life feeling horrible. Mm -hmm. and I feel like I have so much time to make up for. Right. And, you know, I, I just want to enjoy feeling good. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you guys can swing it, that's, that definitely would help in your recovery process, I'm sure. It has. It has. Because I know that even just since I, I got the news that I was, you know, going to be retiring and, and, um, I was, I didn't realize how much of a burden I was carrying for my nursing team. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was the senior nurse on the nursing team and I was one of the nurse preceptors. So I trained new nurses and, um, I felt, I know that me not being there was putting a real stress on the team mm -hmm. and they couldn't hire somebody to replace me as long as I was on medical leave. And so, yeah, it was a, I was so relieved when they just finally said, we can't hold your job any longer. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause then it's like, okay, good. You can, you can hire somebody else and, and you're, the, you'll have a full team now. And, and, and it won't be, a, I won't be a burden anymore. Yeah. That, that's, hey, you got better days ahead. I could tell we're going to have a uh, super Lynn uh, in one of your videos come, coming up. <laughs> I certainly hope so. I, you know, I'm looking forward to it and I'm, I have a goal of sometime in 2024, I want to complete a 5k. I don't need to run it. Right. But I want to sign up and actually complete a 5k. So nice. that's one of my goals. Another one of my goals is, so my husband flies, uh, not for a living, but he's a private pilot. We have a, we have an airplane and I've never been able to fly with him because I don't fit in his airplane. Right. And yeah, some of the smaller ones are, yeah, they're pretty small. Yeah. It's small. It's a Cessna 150. It's a small, okay. it's a small plane. And, um, so one of I, you know, he said that a passenger, you know, with his weight and everything, his passenger needs to be under 250 pounds. Okay. And so, yeah, so I've got a little ways to go. I'm like 284 right now. Right. You're getting um, close. I'm getting there. Yeah. So I will, one of my big things is to be able to, for the very first time ever to fly. And I, he's been flying since I met him mm -hmm. when we were in college and like 33 years we've been married. I've never flown with him. Oh my goodness. I started gaining weight fairly early on. You better bring the camera. You better bring the oh, camera. I'm going to film it. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm absolutely going to film it. In fact, I have a lot of my viewers going, yes, we want to see, we can't wait to see when you can finally yep. fit in that airplane and fly for the first time with your husband. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. You're going to have to have a Go GoPro on your chest, on your head. Yeah. One in your hand. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have we have we have several GoPros that we can hook up to the plane and stuff. So we'll make sure to record and wow, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So uh speaking of your channel, uh what what are your plans for your channel? Like kind of what are you doing with it now and maybe what do you see doing in the future? Um, well, it's it's been kind of organically growing. I yeah, I started like I said, I started it for myself for accountability. I honestly didn't know if anybody would even start following me and I'm getting close to 900 subscribers. Um, I'm just like this close to the 3000 watch hours. Okay. Um, but I'm just trying to bring some value. And I know there's a lot of people that are YouTube. I'm sharing my journey, of course, mm -hmm. you know, and I do share a nursing perspective on things. I have some videos that are, that are a little more sciencey. I did a, a video about, you know, histamine intolerance and low histamine carnivore diet. And, and I've done a video on, you know, my experiences with iodine and, and, you know, 
and I've started doing, I've been doing some live streams. I've been interviewing people and, um, you know, just trying to chronicle my journey and kind of get to know my viewers a little bit. You know, yep. I am part of the book club, the low carb book club that meets every Sunday, 2 p.m. Um, Pacific time. Okay. And so five o'clock Eastern time. And we are, we're recovering. We're going through the uh, Jason Fung obesity code. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's a live stream at, that, um, that I'm on every, and I, and I stream it to my channel, okay. but you know, I'm just, I've never been one to like ask people to subscribe. And I know so many people do, and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just like, so self-conscious. That's <laughs> not <laughs> So like when I say that my channel grows organically, it just really does because I never ask anybody to like or subscribe or share or anything. I just, I just put myself out there and, you know, if people want to watch, they want to watch. And if they want to subscribe, they subscribe. Yeah. And yeah. Well, uh, I'm definitely going to put your links in the description and try to get you a couple more anyways. Oh, well, that yeah. would be nice. We definitely need to, everybody needs to spread this message far and wide because it's not going to be suggested by the mainstream. And in my right. opinion, it's not going to be at least anytime soon. So the ground right. up, now we're going to have to spread this and uh, spreading all of our yeah. anecdotal evidence, uh, you know. that And it means that, something. I mean, yeah. I realize anecdotal evidence from one person may not mean a lot, but the more of us share our stories, the more it can't be ignored. Absolutely. And you know, and that's why I decided to start interviewing people on my channel too, because it's like, we're kind of interviewing each other, but it's reaching a broader audience that way. And, you know, eventually, you know, hopefully the healthcare system is going to, going to, they, they will no longer be able to ignore it. If there's Absolutely. enough people that are seeing pretty incredible results, much better results than they're seeing by going to their regular doc. That's for sure. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And what's interesting today, you're actually the second nurse that I've interviewed today. <laughs> oh, wow. The first one was a nurse at a inpatient psychiatric center. So his passion is to get patients off of the SSRIs and, and the med yeah. uh, heavy medications that, that those folks are on with the di carnivore diet. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, in my last seven years of nursing, I was specializing in gastroenterology and hepatology. I wish I knew, I mean, of course, if I knew then what I know now, I probably would have gotten fired <laughs> because all the doctors were pushing fiber and, you know, right. vegetables and your whole grains. And I would have been telling people with their Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and all of that to no f go carnivore. Right. Because carnivore is going to, is going to heal you and put you in permanent remission and get you off the medications. And I know now there's so many case studies done and there's people who are, are in, remission from autoimmune diseases mm -hmm. and getting off of their medications. And so, yeah, I probably would have been in trouble, but. <laughs> yeah, know, for sure. I mean, gastroenterology, they don't talk that much about nutrition, uh, you know, other than pushing the food guide pyramid. Yeah. And fiber. I mean, <laughs> lots of fiber. I just don't understand. It seems like that area of, of health is just so far behind. Um, yeah, I see that. I really see that now. And I didn't see that when I was working there. And mm -hmm. even though I had done the carnivore diet back in 2021, I, it didn't click because back when I was doing it then, I wasn't listening to people on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't listening to the doctors. I wasn't listening to other people share their stories. I was just doing it on my own. and. This time around, I'm listening to everybody that I can. And so now I know, like, fiber is not good for you. <laughs> it's yeah. messing your gut up. <laughs> yeah. It's essentially like uh, swallowing a sack of screws. You just, something that you can't digest. Or yeah, similar. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. And it's so inflammatory. Right. I mean, you're dealing with people with inflammatory autoimmune diseases and then adding, telling them to eat these inflammatory foods. Mm -hmm. And now I know like that makes zero sense. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's crazy. So what does Len do for a hobby in your free time? Okay. Well, now that I actually have some energy, 
<laughs> like before I had energy, it was binge watch TV. <laughs> And because I didn't have any energy to do anything and I crochet, I mean, I've been crocheting since I was a child. So I, I crochet and I do enjoy reading. Um, but now that I actually have some energy, I am getting back into geocaching. Oh, nice. I love, you know, my husband and I were geocaching back when I had an era where I felt kind of okay. And so I have actually, my neighbor invited me to this 50 plus women of my county Facebook group and they're very active so uh, that's where i got hooked up with the mall walking and i've been going to different events and i've been hosting geocaching events oh that's Um, awesome i'm working i'm really wanting to do as much as possible outdoors and um yeah i hate cooking so (laughs) cooking cooking is not a hobby and so this is the best diet for people who don't like cooking Absolutely. I'm right there with you. I cannot stand spending time cooking. It's just seems like a total waste. Of time. It's almost annoying yeah. that I have to eat anything. Oh, <laughs> I, I want know. To do other stuff. Me too. Yeah. But my youngest daughter is getting married in May. And so, you know, I'm really wanting to be able to have to look good for her wedding and to have the stamina to dance at her wedding and not hurt myself and not get worn out too quickly. And so that's a kind of a interim goal is, is to really be able to be in good shape for her wedding at the beginning of May. Uh, you're, so you're definitely exercise is higher on my priority right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's awesome. Yeah. I found it. Uh, that exercise was like it didn't even mean anything in terms of weight loss and mu- like muscle tone and stuff. For whatever reason, it was just happening. Like I, I had no control. I, it was just working out that way. I'm like, this is right. Crazy. Well, that's same with me. Like I said, I was gaining all this muscle and bone without even exercising at all. So yeah. it's just this this diet does that to you. <laughs> It's miraculous. And then, and then when you have the muscle, you actually have some energy to exercise. It's like yes. the muscle comes first and then the exercise. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, During, during, my experience. during that 24 hour live stream that uh, Carrie and I did, and so many others, mm-hmm. when it was time to take a break, I would actually, so I'm actually in an outbuilding outside my house. Okay. And probably about 75 feet from here to the house, I would sprint back and forth <laughs> to the house just to burn off some energy, even during trying to stay awake during 24 hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I watched that live stream. That was amazing. I don't know how you guys did it. <laughs> I don't mean they're looking back now because I, I, I oh, did yeah. hit a wall eventually. But Oh, yeah. One of these days I want to sprint and I... I'm not there yet. I think I still weigh too much to do right. it safely. But just right now, increasing movement is is the key, and being able to walk without injuring myself is right. a, is a, yeah is is important. And I'm seeing great progress. That's awesome. I, I yeah. really love that. So, if they're looking forward in your uh, YouTube channel, so is it going to be more of the same? Well, we already know we're going to get a flying video. <laughs> <laughs> so is it going to be more of the same yeah well i do every monday i do a wait i do a, my weekly weigh-in okay. um, video and i usually do a recap of the previous yeah. week and um you know i i do other videos of just stuff that's going on you know in my life and things that i'm doing like so, I, so sometimes i show what i eat which it's often it's a lot of the same uh, today I did an unboxing video because I ordered uh, a, something new for my kitchen that was going to be helpful for me. So I did an unboxing video. I'm going to do more planning on doing more exercise videos, um, just kind of what I'm doing, not trying to teach anybody to exercise because I'm not the person to do that, but just right. to kind of share what I'm doing and the progress that I'm making. You know, I and a lot of people say, well, you know, you're a nurse and lost me questions, but I'm not an expert. I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert in carnivore diet. I mean, right. none of us really are, right? Right. I mean, this is all new to all of us. So I don't really, I'm kind of my own guinea pig. I don't know how my body's going to respond, but I can report to you how it's doing. 
yep. and share that I couldn't exercise before and now I can do this. So I'm, you know, I want to do more of that. And as you know, the winter is going to be a little challenging because it does rain a lot here. But when the on nice days, I like to do more filming outdoors as well. And, you know, and cool. people like seeing my little, my dog, Max. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice to have a mascot in, in yeah in, you know. <laughs> yeah i'm continuing to do live streams with interviews um i've got some uh i've got carrie from my metamorphosis coming up i've okay. got um uh da, 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 i've got uh, nicole from former fat girl okay. and i have i'm gonna feel bad if i don't remember the third <laughs> <laughs> i've got several coming up That's right yeah oh, very cool yeah i can't yeah. wait to uh, check those out Maybe I'll try to get in there and reach, uh, try to restrain myself from trolling. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? And you're welcome to come and share your story on my channel too. I every, love to share everybody's stories. And okay, everybody has something different and a different perspective and a little something different. And different people will connect with you. Absolutely, yeah. And I'm game anytime. Anytime yeah. you want to lower your standards and, and have me on, <laughs> I'm more than willing. <laughs> No, are you kidding? Lowering my standards would be interviewing a vegan. <laughs> right. I'm a former vegan, so I guess that's close yeah, enough. You know, not to say anything about vegans. I've got vegans in my family that we love. Right. I have to remember there's a lot of the doctors that will say, you know, at least they're working on their health. Right. They just are doing it wrong. Right. For sure. Well, I, I was doing it wrong because I wasn't doing it for my health. My oh. business partner had cancer and oh. it was his he got the protocol from a guy that had the same type of cancer 20 years ago that was a friend of his, and he's still alive. So he's like, oh, well, if he's still alive, I'm doing this diet, right? Mm. And as a show of solidarity with him, I decided I'm going to do this diet with you, and I can't stand vegetables. Like, I literally, I've never liked vegetables. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm eating raw vegetables, you know, for two oh, years, my. and it was just well, so gross. What is good? What a good friend you yeah, are. Yeah, I was disgusted. Oh, my. Yeah. So, but it made my uh, autoimmune condition worse, the vitiligo. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. I had it around my waist. And I never really kind of put two and two together until after I searched for a way to fix it once it started showing up on my arms. Because mm -hmm. now it's somewhere that's external where people are going to see it. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, it's going to spread to my face and all this other stuff. So, right. Did a search. Joe Rogan uh, has the same condition and he was on carnivore diet and it started to reverse. Next thing you know, I'm like, you know, hey, my, my health is my health. Yeah, there's you know, your answer. It's long enough with you. I'm going to, I'm, I'm making the switch. So, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, however, whenever everyone has their own why and everyone has their own timing. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate too that. A lot, lot of times we have to get desperate before we try this way of eating. But right now that's the case with a lot of people because right now it's portrayed as a really extreme way of eating. And I'm hoping that over time mm -hmm. um, that will change. It, it'll I be, agree. yeah, and it'll be considered a, a genuinely viable way to eat. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's the way that kings would eat. Ribeyes. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, come on. That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Well, Lynn, I thank you for joining me today. And so before we go, do you want to give a shout out to your YouTube channel? And I think you also have an Instagram as well. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a good Instagram person, so I'm slowly putting some things on there. But yeah, my YouTube channel is where I spend most of my time. It's at Midlife Carnivore. Um, anyone who wants to email me, if they want to, you know, we're watching this in your carnivore and you want to come on my channel, happy to have you. It's midlifecarnivore at gmail.com. And then my um, Instagram is just the uh, midlife underscore carnivore. So it's easy to find. Very cool. Awesome. Lynn, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. I'm sure you'll be an inspiration to many, especially once we see that flying video. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody go subscribe to, to Midlife Carnivore and uh, check Lynn out, especially when she gets, uh, gets up, up in the skies with her husband.
Yes. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Lynn, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. All right. Bye.